So this company, Rekka AI, just dropped their new language model and this release came out of nowhere and the crazy thing about it is that it is rivaling GPT-4 and Claude 3. Just as we talked about, Grok 1.5 was being shown off and now this has come out of nowhere. As well as that big news, we also saw the US beginning regulating AI, which is a massive step. A lot of big news, let's talk about it. So this AI startup is called Rekka and their new language model is called Rekka Core. This model does support multimodal inputs, so you can input image, video or audio. And this language model has come from this company which I actually hadn't heard of before, but it turns out that this company was founded by researchers from Google DeepMind and Meta. So definitely a lot of talent behind this project here. So on screen now is the performance of this new Rekka Core model compared to the other top models at the moment. So of course we have GPT-4, Claude Free Opus, Claude Free Sonnet, Gemini Ultra and Gemini Pro 1.5. And there's a number of benchmarks here that we can talk about. First of all we have the MMLU test and this stands for the Massive Multitask Language Understanding Test. So this benchmark generally tests how language models understand the questions you're asking when they're written in the normal English language and if they can give quality answers based on the context that you provide discussing in in other languages other than English. And as we can see, the record core model scored 83.2% on this test. Now, although that doesn't beat GPT-4 or Claude Free Opus, we can see that it is really close to those scores and it does leave Claude Free Sonnet in the dust. And Claude Free Sonnet is definitely not a bad model. The next benchmark is the GSM 8K test. And this is essentially just a reasoning test. So they wanna test the language model, if it can reason with you, explain the logic behind its decisions and answers and everything else that comes with reasoning with someone in real life. Here the score is a 92.2% which actually does beat ChatGPT, only just marginally but it does beat ChatGPT4, which is very impressive. Next up, we have the coding benchmark in which Rekka Core scored 76.8% here, again beating GPT4, but still lagging behind Claude Free Opus, which is in the clear lead here, which is about 10 points above all the other models. The next benchmark is the GPQA main benchmark, and we saw this a few days ago, and this is essentially a set of questions that are made by experts in their fields, which are fields such as physics or chemistry and these questions are made to be at an expert level difficulty and thus they are deemed ungoogleable questions. Rekka scoring a 38.2 here, beating out some of the other models but again still behind Claude Free Opus, the current top model. Now it's also worth noting there are a number of examples on Rekka's website and by a number I mean a large number, they have loads and loads of examples of this AI working like here where they ask Rekka Core what's everyone doing in this picture and the AI is able to identify that the group of people are playing a card game, specifically poker, and then it goes on to describe what's happening exactly in the image. Speaking of, we then have the image and video tests here. The images can be anything from real world imagery to tables and diagrams, and it's just testing how well it can identify elements and describe them in images and understand what's going on. And then finally, the video perception test. And again, while the scores generally across record core aren't blowing the other models out of the water, it's another competitor on the stage of AI that's just come out of nowhere. So very impressive stuff. It will be interesting to see where this startup goes and if they really do become a competitor on the AI stage now. Here's an obscure example for you that I did find. They ask Rekka Core what is he doing in this image and he's obviously solving a Rubik's Cube with his feet and the AI manages to understand that. Totally bizarre example and if you asked me beforehand if an AI would have figured that out I couldn't have told you for sure because it's so weird. Another really big piece of news from today is that the US has begun trying to regulate AI. So this US bill has just come out and this is a very, very extensive document. And essentially it details the United States plan to regulate AI and stop it from becoming a risk to the world. There's a lot to talk about with this, so I'll just try to do my best and summarize it for you as it is a very long document. 
So they are introducing a new federal administration which is called the Frontier Artificial Intelligence Systems Administration and their purpose is obviously to regulate this new artificial intelligence wave that is coming. And in this document they give different levels or tiers of how concerned they are by an AI system and what requirements place them into which tier. So tier 1 being a low concern AI system, tier 1 being a low concern AI system, tier 2 being a medium concern AI system and tier 3 obviously being a high concern AI system. Then as well as that they have a fourth tier which is extremely high concern and the requirements for an AI system to make it into this tier are listed below as following. The AI system has or could easily develop the ability to significantly assist with the development, manufacture, deployment of biological, chemical, radiological or nuclear weapons. Now I'm not crazy in saying this but I think that tier has been reached at least to an extent with most of the top models at the moment. Now I'm not saying AI is in the position to radically change the development process and make it easier but if you are able to jailbreak these language models it really wouldn't be that hard to figure out how to make chemical weapons. And the other ones talk about the AI spreading and becoming smarter than people and then there's just this super unclear one at the bottom. The AI system otherwise poses significant existential or global catastrophic risks. Not abundantly clear there. So myself and a lot of other people are actually surprised at how quickly this has arrived because legislation, especially on regulating new things, has been notoriously slow in the past. And with the exponential growth of AI's intelligence, it really was important that at least something was done. Albeit, I don't think by any means this is a perfect regulation document, but a start is a start and hopefully we'll get to a position where we can get a little bit of safety behind us, at least in some form. In OpenAI news, OpenAI is opening a new office in Japan and are releasing a custom GPT-4 model optimized for the Japanese language. Sam Altman says, We're excited to be in Japan which has a rich history of people and technology coming together to do more. We believe AI will accelerate work by empowering people to be more creative and productive while also delivering broad value to current and new industries that have yet to be imagined. And they show this little video here that demonstrates the optimized GPT-4 version in Japanese and how it can produce answers much faster. They say that this new optimized model operates up to three times faster than its predecessor in the Japanese language. And they talk about how the Japanese government implemented AI policies that align with its goals for human dignity, diversity and inclusion and sustainable societies. Interesting stuff as Japan is known for its technology sectors, so it'll be nice to see how the develops in the future. And then finally, a lot of news today. China's new light-based chip could power artificial intelligence. So this new chip uses what's described as an innovative architecture. The chip is reportedly over 1,000 times more energy efficient than Nvidia's high-performance H100 GPU chip. The chip is reportedly over 1,000 times more energy efficient than Nvidia's high-performance H100 chip. And you're likely aware of the H100 chip's importance in training AI models at the moment, causing Nvidia's stock to skyrocket. They say here, according to the researchers, this chip could potentially make artificial general intelligence a reality. And yes, I am avoiding trying to pronounce it. They say that they anticipate this chip will accelerate the development of more powerful solutions. They say that they anticipate that this chip will accelerate the development of more powerful optical solutions as critical support for the foundation model and a new era of AGI. The team demonstrated a distributed network with 13.96 million artificial neurons, which exceeded the previous best, which was just 1.47 million neurons. So the summary of this chip is that it is reportedly 1,000 times more energy efficient than Nvidia's high-performance H100 chip, which has the potential to be a game-changer in this industry. So if everything here does prove to be true and this chip is able to start being manufactured, this could be a massive game-changer for the AI industry using this new Chinese light chip. But that's all for today. So if you're still listening, I appreciate you. Drop a like if you can, it really helps me out. And thanks for watching.